Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good evening. Uh, welcome back here on the live stream. Uh, it is the Earth Master here on this Wednesday night, August 2nd, 2023. About 10.33 p.m. here, California time. Latest quake on the globe, Earthquake 3D globe here. It looks like a 1.6 into the air area of Alaska. Also, uh, some movement kicking up here along the Middle America Trench there in the red flag. Did see a little bit of uptick here across the area today. Uh, including a 4.0 down here looks like around South Island New Zealand let's go ahead and jump in there real quick see what's going on there um, across the area of New Zealand real quick as we pull in the GeoNet servers notice a 4.0 coming in South Island uh, just outside of Host area looks like uh, there was a few reports being felt here across the area of South Island New Zealand about 60 reports or so mostly weak to light shaking uh, from a 4.0 at about 41 kilometers deep. Had that been a little bit more shallower, then uh, we'd be looking at a little bit stronger event, at least far as the uh, felt reports go. Uh, look at the earthquake drums here. We'll obviously show that four-pointer here across uh, the South Island area. Looks like there's been a handful of smaller quakes as well around Jackson Bay uh, prior to that uh, four-pointer. Uh, so things stirring up here slightly across South Island specifically. Uh, mostly south of the Alpine Fault there across the area. All right, California area. Got anything uh, going on out here? Of course, we had that uh, four-pointer, 4.1 4 uh, last night. Handful of aftershocks. The last one, though, about 5 o'clock this morning. So we really haven't seen any further aftershock activity there across the Salton Sea region of Southern Cal. Uh, well, a couple smaller quakes here across the area. Mostly uh, looks like it's just off the Elsinore Fault, which still remains pretty quiet. We haven't really seen any earthquake activity for the most part across this fault system, which is very rare. Uh, further up north across the area of Ridgecrest and uh, the rest of Central California, very small earthquake activity across the region. With a handful of smaller quakes there outside of Lake Tahoe. One further earthquake here outside of the Petrolia area this evening, 2.6, 27 kilometers deep, right into the Cascadia Mega Thrust area. A little bit of movement there off the Blanco Fracture Zone as well. That was a 2.5 from this morning. And uh, look at the activity here across the region of the Cascades. A little bit of movement across Mount St. Helens, Mount Rainier, and also up around Mount Baker area. Uh, this is all very small microquake activity but a slight increase there across the cascades uh, a look at the trimmer map here tonight let's pull up the cascadia trimmer and uh, we'll take a look and see what's going on as uh, far as the cascadia trimmer goes stand by for a second they've been kind of slow here something's going on with their network far as the uh the uh, delay time 226 that's the total amount of epicenters. A little bit here in Washington, Oregon, and Northern California. Now, the Northern California activity there, directly due east of that 2.6 that we've seen here uh, earlier this evening. And uh, obviously, trimmer activity does apply further strain upstream. And if there's enough stress upstream uh, to, produce, to produce some earthquakes, uh, obviously, they will pop off. 2.6 for now, but overall trimmer activity uh, somewhat elevated there and continuing to build up for the next mega quake there across the area of the Cascadia. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, a couple smaller earthquakes from this morning. Uh, let's go ahead and double check and see what we got there from the Yellowstone area. There are the earthquakes in question from early this morning. Since then, it looks like maybe we've seen one more earthquake. For the majority though, this earthquake activity, very small uh, minor earthquake activity around the one range or so or below <laughs> so these are not big earthquakes whatsoever across Yellowstone just a slight little uptick there outside of Yellowstone uh, Lake all right uh, further across the region here mostly smaller microquakes across Texas Kansas area and maybe uh, Ohio aside from that let's check out the Caribbean here we did have some further activity here off the coast of Panama this is amongst the Cocos Plate and the Nazca Plate. we got two separate plates here. Nazca Plate, the bigger one here, and the Cocos Plate, the smaller one. This is out on a uh, uh, kind of a fracture zone here. This is the, uh, oh, it's kind of hard to see it here, but you see this red line. Uh, that activity striking about eight kilometers deep. 
earlier this evening. Now we did see a handful of smaller quakes there across the Middle America Trench as well. This is a region that did see quite a bit of activity there across the uh, Gulf of Fonseca uh, over the past week or so. So just kind of watching that. I still think something bigger is brewing across the area. Not really seeing any major swarm there across the Gulf for now, but uh, just some earthquake activity. We're ramping up there uh, off the coast of Panama. A little bit of movement here off the coast of uh, Puerto Rico as well. Nothing major going on. No major swarms. South America region there. One earthquake, at least according to the USGS uh, 4.1. But the EMSC models here shows a little bit more activity in the 2 and 3 range across the area of Chile. All right, 1.9 Alaska. Not a whole lot of movement occurring there, but we are seeing some deeper activity quakes here into the Curl Kamachaka Trench. Now look at this here. Uh, got a 4.3 earlier this afternoon, almost 400 kilometers deep here, uh, well inland, away from the plate boundary, but this is a subduction zone, of course, so uh, we do see a lot of deeper quakes here away from this area, but that's just going to add further strain upstream here across the Kuril Kamachaka. We've got to watch out there for some uh, mega quake potential. Uh, the Filipino plate here, very quiet. Not a whole lot going on across this area of the Mariana Trench or the Izu Trench here lately. Most of the activity clustered across the Indonesia Islands area. There's that four-pointer South Island. Not a whole lot of further act, uh, uptick here across the Fiji area or the Tonga Trench for now. Uh, Java Trench has backed off a little bit here across the uh, Sumatra region that has been active over the past couple days, but things quieting down. Uh, some further activity here across the Red Sea region where we did see a 4.4, 13.33 and 13 seconds. Those are your lucky lottery numbers. Maybe the Mega mega Millions uh, jackpot there uh, might want to guess those numbers there. Pretty cool. 4.4, 10 kilometers deep there into the uh, uh, Urethia. Uh, oh, goodness. <laughs> I can't remember the exact pronunciation of this area. Uh, Eurytria, I believe. Uh, either way, this area has seen quite a bit of uh, earthquake activity here recently. Uh, pull up the, uh, the all, at least somewhat of the all magnitudes here, where it did see a 5.6 and some other 4s out here across the area. Again, the latest, a 4.4 earlier this afternoon, uh, just off of the divergent boundary. Uh, earthquake here into Turkey within the last hour, 4.2 in the red circle. And somewhat of a moderate earthquake here outside of Crete, Greece, uh, just off of the plate boundary, that earthquake coming in uh, earlier this evening. So things amplifying here across the area. Now this 5.8 is not a legit earthquake. It's still up on the globe for whatever reason. Uh, but for some reason, whenever the EMSC models put out earthquake data for Spain within this area, whether it's a 3 or maybe a 4, They'll show a larger size magnitude than what's being reported. So it's a little error, a little glitch uh, in the Earthquake 3D program, I believe. But that 5.8 did not occur within this area. So ignore that. But definitely activity there across the uh, Crete area and areas to the east around Turkey. Uh, it's movement well off the coast there of Greenland. That earthquake uh, really not showing up here across the USGS map. But we did see some activity with a 4.2 earlier. And uh, what do we got? 2.5 stirring up here in California currently as we speak about this. Look at that. Wow. Maybe I spoke too soon on Southern California. We got back-to-back -back earthquakes here within seconds of each other. We got a 2.2 and a 2.5. So let's look at the live seismos. Um, I only see one earthquake. That's going to be this one right here. Um, yeah, only one earthquake. This station here, Barrett, is in Southern California. I don't see two specific earthquakes. Not for sure why two registered. Maybe an error. Um, but there's definitely an earthquake there. Obviously, we've seen it on the seismograph station. So whether this kicks up into a swarm or not, we'll see overnight if it does. And I would be on guard out here across the Southern California area. This is very close to the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault. Uh, the question is, how many more swarms, how many more further earthquakes around this area will it take to potentially trigger the big one out here? We're talking about an 8.1. This is not an area to be messing around with. We don't want to see earthquakes bouncing back and forth here uh, within the area of a sleeping giant 
All right, we're talking about 8.1 magnitude earthquake that could uh, obviously devastate the Southern California area. Uh, I believe it's long overdue. There's some chat uh, through sci scientists, geologists, seismologists that uh, it's only delayed because of certain lake levels out here. But, uh, you know, the, the, the delay does not mean it's not coming. So it's definitely inevitable. It's coming whether we like it or not. So we'll watch this for some further swarming. Right now, just some earthquake activity popping up there on the uh, on the map here. It looks like just one earthquake. All right, uh, what else? What else do we have here across the region of um, the globe? Hawaii, Pahala area, still showing some movement. Nothing major going on across the volcanoes for now. Uh, let's see, Earthquake 3D Globe, see if we got anything spectacular going on here further outside the regions. Doesn't look like it, so it's a mixed bag of earthquake activity all over the place. Your typical regions, though, are quiet. We're talking about Fiji and the Tonga area, all quiet. Uh, we'll probably expect those to fill in overnight. And, uh, yeah, we'll just continue to watch that with Southern California kind of kicking up here now uh, with that 2.4. Space weather activity here from the solarham.net site. Well, what do we have? We're saying so long here to 3380. See you later, buddy. That's going to be the sunspot out here on the southwestern limb of the sun. Uh, that has been a source of numerous M flares here recently, and it's still currently flaring. Notice that bright feature here. Uh, ignore the majority of these sunspots that are currently facing Earth. We need to watch these areas around the eastern limb of the sun as they come around the bend. Uh, I think that they're going to play a part here in some um, solar weather activity over the coming days as they progress here across uh, the sun here and get into Earth-directed view. Uh, we are noticing, though, slight... Uh, enhancement here across this solar sunspot region with a little enhancement here as well they haven't really popped out too much but uh, definitely want to keep an eye on a couple of these here because of their growth uh, within the last 12 hours but uh, around the bend here eastern limb of the sun does harbor some potential uh, for some flaring i think in the coming days now it looks like these guys are forecasting a G1 class storm here coming up. Well, we know how that G1 class storm was predicted or forecasted over the last 48 hours. It never really came came to pass. We did peak out around the KP index at four a little bit with slight elevated conditions there for the auroras. But uh, right now, let's see what these guys are forecasting here. It looks around around the August 4th UTC time. 1820 to four, uh, 1824 to 0600 to the August 5th time period. So we'll cover this a little bit uh, more tomorrow uh, in the time uh, probability, but I, I don't know. I don't know where this is coming from. Um, let's see here. What do we got? Coronal dimming was observed this morning following an upper C-class flare. Uh, looks like it, was produ it did produce a faint halo CME. Uh, overall, that's not that impressive, obviously. However, a passage path past Earth may be possible within the next 72 hours. So there is the answer to my question that's coming from 3386 uh, with a, a, a slight coronal uh, mass ejection there. We'll watch that, though, and see if it uh, does trigger anything across the polar regions. We're not really expecting anything major in terms of the uh, auroras, but hey... A little bit of uptick coming in, potentially. All right, 99% chance for a C flare, M flare at 55, X flare around 10%, 10% proton event possibilities as well. The main culprit, 3380, which is now scooting off uh, around the western limb of the sun, uh, harbors about the most complex structure there with a beta gamma class magnetic uh, field. But again, we'll watch these areas around the eastern limb of the sun here in the coming hours and days. Uh, not a whole lot there across the weather forecast here. Looks like tomorrow we do have an enhanced area. Tomorrow being Thursday, uh, looks like potentially, well, I don't see any major tornado po uh, potential. 2% down there across areas of uh, Alabama. Main threat tomorrow looks like it's going to be some wind. Those are straight line winds across that 30% zone there, mostly into um, Kansas, Colorado, and Nebraska. 
day four, though. Look at day four, potentially here. Day four is going to be um, coming up on the uh, Saturday, the 5th. Potentially a severe weather breakout here across the area of Kansas. Uh, now, that could include, um, you know, many different uh, options here for severe weather. We'll continue to watch that, though, as we head towards the Saturday time frame. Right now, it's a little too early, but the Storm Prediction Center here is forecasting a potential severe weather threat across this area. Uh, come Saturday into Sunday, that's the weekend. All right, what do we got here for the assembles across the states? Any major cool down coming up? Any major heat waves? Well, we're pretty much neutral outside here in California right now. Uh, got 72 degrees, not bad, but we're supposed to stretch up here in the weekend in the 105 degree range or so. And looks like uh, that's going to be Sunday and a Monday. Notice the high pressure ridging out here along the West Coast. Some cooler temperatures out here across the Midwest and the Great Lakes area. Notice that troughing. That's going to be the dipping here observed with the jet stream bringing in some cooler air, much cooler air. Goodness, I bet those folks are going to enjoy it. Uh, that's stretching across a portion of the west out here. Not quite in the California, but that's going to scoot the high pressure down south. Uh, and it uh, looks like we could, well, looks like we could see normal temperatures here into the second week of August. But uh, we see some high pressure ridging up here along the Pacific Northwest. Uh, looks like towards the end of the second week of August. So oh, I'm ready to see pretty much this right over the west coast not even joking i'm ready for winter um i'm i'm really excited though for this winter because we are looking at a el nino pattern which means uh uh it means basically that we could see a wetter than normal um outlook for the winter as far as rainfall goes along the west coast so we'll continue to watch that last year last winter was pretty wet very wet uh, across the entire West Coast here. California, Southern California, seeing the record-breaking snow uh, up in the mountains. And, um, you know, that was a triple-dip La Nina pattern. And more normally, the La Nina patterns mean uh, drier out here across the West Coast and wetter up here across the Pacific Northwest. But this was a rare event, triple-dip La Nina, and it was, it was crazy. So I'm hoping for an El Nino pattern that will bring maybe a second winter here of uh, some significant precipitation here across the west coast we'll see how that goes all right folks for now uh, stay safe out there got one earthquake there's that one earthquake again in barrett I, I don't see two even though these guys are showing two on the map it doesn't look like the usgs has got to the uh the data yet it is 11 o'clock at night out here almost so i'm sure they're just climbing into bed um so one of these are the legit earthquake, whether it's a 2.2 or a 2.5. Um, I'm kind of leaning more towards a 2.2 level. Just looking at this seismograph station, it does not look like a 2.5. But either way, one earthquake kicking up out here around the Salton Sea area. All right, folks, um, have a good night. Stay safe out there and uh, just be prepared. We'll catch you guys back here sometime tomorrow. Peace out.